everybody. It's Julie. Happy New Year to anyone who's been through it already, and good luck with the next to the new one for anyone who hasn't. Um. Oh, yes. Thank you. Just go away. Um. I just open up a new drive. I'm transferring over the effects I'm going to need for today. I got, I didn't do it early enough. Um, for anybody who, oh, <laughs> I didn't have my microphone down. And I have to adjust the desktop audio because I was playing game again. And the audio on that is so kind of out of whack. Okay, where's my, come on. Where's my other drive? There it is. I need to pop my effects over into the where we're working on stuff right now. And no. Oh jeez. I hate when you're trying to copy a folder over and you get in there, but it goes into a subfolder. It's so annoying. I know. Oh, first world problems. All that. So it's copying. Now, okay. I don't need to keep any of this file right now. Not even saving it. Oops, there's my naked screen. I did have... Where's the one I saved recently? Uh... I think it's this one where I just saved Chiyoko's attack noises because what we're going to work on today is oh I don't think I transferred her dad's files over here let's see I have had it's this whole week has been very very brain numbing. My brain has been very numb. And as a consequence, uh, it's been a little hard to get much of things done. Of course I didn't. Okay. Well, I'll have to pop that over. It's just too many things to keep track of with the holiday and everything. And I kind of gave myself the week off from doing anything too significant. But still. Oh, sorry if I'm a little bit spacey still. It's not that I've been celebrating too much or anything exotic like that. It's just general exhaustion due to the winter. Winter is my bane. I think we all go through a little bit of that, but still, it's been very, very interesting this year. So, okay, these are, I'm going to make them smaller so that I can uh, see them kind of. I kept, I, I've got these here. These are Chiyoko's different attacks and things that, that she's used regularly. And I'm trying to create something similar for her father. We're going to just work on one today. The chances of getting through more than one is really slim. So we'll start with attack. I have to check and see which ones. Of course, I have to open up the computer, the laptop, again to open up the script because I'm so flippin' clever. Oh, you think I'd be better organized? <laughs> no, not if you know me. I have been putting the radio station in order for the next year and well not next year for the next week <laughs> if you haven't been to the radio station that plays my shows that's just past the automat.com what was i coming oh right script 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 episode one let's find yes he uses attack does he use Anathema? No. Does he use Annihilate, which I never seem to be able to spell? No. Okay, so we pretty much just need the attack one to sound like hers. So I'm going to just go ahead and 
copy this into a new file because we're going to keep this as a sample. And the other thing he is going to use is the archival, which is a form that she doesn't have, but I'll eventually have to recreate as hers when she finally learns it. But that's seasons away. On the other hand, doing it ahead of time is a little easier, as is being demonstrated now by the fact that this is less easy because I'm doing it so late. Really? Oh, der. Okay. I'm going to save this as uh, not into any particular scene. I'm going to save it into episode one, Hiroki's FX. Hiroki is her father's name. So, first things first. No, where did I put the voices? There we go. <sighs> Episode one. Oh. <sighs> what? Well, it should be in voices, but whatever. Okay. Open this up. I can't even spell in my file names. All I need to do is find the attack, which I think is here. Bum, bum. No. Attacked noises for pain throat for battle. Ugh. That's battle sequences. Come on. Attack! <clears throat> attack! Okay. It's so interesting trying to get people to record sounds and things. Okay, so we have that. That's that's the basis. Uh, I can close this. Now, first off, let's listen to her attack. Attack! What? I was like, why is everything quiet? Attack! Now, among other things, I've based a lot of her attack forms and sounds on bells. I used a lot of bell noises for her, and I think I'm going to go a bit slightly different for him. But you can also hear how it actually moves back and forth between the two sides of the thing a little bit. So you get this wobbly sound, which is kind of awesome. And so I want to create something of a similar scale and a similar overall sound, but uh, a little bit different for him. So let's see what I have. I was thinking I might work with some clicking noises, like... Um, like a rattle, but but like a, a clicker that goes in a regular pattern. You know, like tch -tch 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 kind of noises. I know that's not making any sense. I'll know it when I hear it. <laughs> How many of us say that? I'll know it when I hear it. Okay. But if I go into my sound effects and I look for... Oh, where would that be? Try wood noises. No. Um, I have vague ideas of what I want. It might be under toys. You'd be surprised what ends up sounding kind of the way you want. Something like... It's not really what I want. But there's something there. Uh, I'll open... I'll import any other audio I pull. Slot machines, not so much. Um, bicycle gears might do it. Let's see. That's kind of got what I want, but not quite. But then you can use, and you can alter them too. I mean, this is something where I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of altering. Well, 
about this. That's got a little bit of what I want. Oh, let's see. Do I have a music file somewhere? Let's see. Instruments, music. I think I do. I just don't know quite where I put it. It's been so long since I've used my... Uh, my sound effects, of course, that I'm just trying to get back to it. I'm trying noises. Beeps, bells, buzz, crackles, zap, chimes, crystals, drags, drones, explosion. Ah, musical instruments. Slides and splishes, thumps, whoosh. Um, saxophone, guitar, harp, timpani. Uh, let's see. That. Uh, I don't want to use anything too specific. Hip hop drum loop. Oh, sure. Uh, I've used the symbols in, in uh, Chihokos. We use the bamboo flute a lot for anti heavy. So let's see. Sorry, I'm kind of just spacey today. This is going to be a bit of a quiet, a quiet show because uh, there's a lot of listening to things going on here. Oh, a shikari. There we go. That might be what I want. Chambery wood hit shake tribal drum break. Well, we'll open up all these and see what we say what they sound like. Okay. Let's see about that. Actually, for now, I'm going to go edit preferences and change this to simple because that means when I hit solo, it'll mute everything else. That's just easier for now. Okay, home. No, that's silly. Uh, not quite what I want, but I'll keep it in case I can think of something to do with it. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. And then... That's kind of cool. Okay. Let's see now. Now, on top of all this, I'm going to save this just so that I have a, that I don't have a file with a bunch of stuff in it that isn't saved. You never want to leave a bunch of stuff just in a file for very long without having it saved. Because, um, It, it can, it, it, if anything does happen, if you lose power, if you Audacity crashes, you'll lose it. And even if you just delete it the minute it's done, it's better than not saving it while it's sitting there. Now, on top of this, I have just moved in a whole couple of files of sound effects that I just bought recently. And they are... I hate when the thing is hard to read. Uh, da, 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 season. All my effects. This one. So, these are specifically power whooshes. Um, I bought a license for them on a sale recently. It was very exciting. So the question is, how many of these do I want to listen to to see if they're what I want? Let's say, let's just do some random choice and listen to a few. Eh, not much to it. That's a good one to end on. Um... What I'm going to do, rather than try and remember them or open them all right now, is I am going to 
open a second window over here. Go into Hiroki's effects file and make a whooshes subdirectory and copy them in. I will never move them out of my initial directory. That just gets you into so much trouble. Moving anything Nah, too modern for him. Uh... Well, that's kind of cool. I might move that one in here. Part of it is using a bunch of different stuff and balancing them against each other to get the ultimate sound you want. How about this one? Maybe. I mean, part of it is just having in mind what it is you want out of the ultimate, um, what you want to get out of the whole thing. <laughs> one's good, but a little bit more modern than I want. I mean, he's very old school. Well, that's pretty cool. If you listen to this on headphones, that went back and forth and back and forth. I'd like it, but it's way too long for what I'm doing right now. I'd use it for one of his bigger attacks, but we don't have to do those. At least not yet. If there's another flashback sequence, that's always possible. But for now, what's this? I might want to keep that one around for the other one. I'm going to go ahead and make another folder in here for the archivolt because that is a sound effect I've got to create which is separate and that's going to take a lot more a lot more sounds and partly because it is a a much it, it is the fifth form it is the most powerful of all the abilities they get what's this wait I get this stupid screen. Whatever. I thought it was something else. Okay. Uh, put that over. Oh, no. Hello. Copy. Paste. Let's see swirling bubble no that's too silly <laughs> kind of cool but let's see the archivolt has to end with a very definitive like closing noise because what it is is sealing a gate so it is going to have to end with a very very hard thump noise Ooh, i like that one speaking of uh what about that <laughs> There's a lot of really cool stuff in here. This is why I bought this specifically, was because I knew I'd be working with this. Now, I also have the dark wishes to go through. Um, I don't know that there's that much difference, but... Well, that was interesting. Let's 
see. I kind of like that one for the the arc vault again. I like having a lot of options to choose from. Some of these are obviously going to be used for monster noises as well, because I've got a monster to uh, illustrate when I get there as well. Ooh, eerie wailing whoosh. Metallic heavy. Ooh, Comet. Oh, I like that one actually. Uh, let's see what else we got. Low groaning swirl. Save that one for the archivolt. I'll stop soon. I just like listening to him. <laughs> Low malevolent whoosh. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'll save that one for later. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and stop for now, probably. Let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, rattling. Uh, no. Uh, sinister. Not so much for this one. At least I'm not listening to all of them. <laughs> Hopefully this ending. I wonder what that would sound like backwards. That's one thing that, you know, the, a lot of these are going to end up being altered in some form as I make the sound. I like to make sounds really unique and not be like, and see, anytime you work on a lot of this, um, one of the things we found early on was we'd hear certain effects that people used a lot, and, and part of it was that, um, oh, especially sound effects, because not especially music, I mean, because... Um, You'd end up with people. Uh, oh no. Um, we we'd we'd have especially work. I am so absolutely lacking in glibness today. You'd end up with um, Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com, who has wonderful musical selection. Is like the godfather of all indie projects because his music is is available. Uh, for use for most of the time without, oh crap, without, um, I meant to import, not open, uh, without any sort of uh, cost, or at least totally minimal cost. And, but, much as we love his work, eventually you know it all. I mean, if you work, if you're, if you're making shows, you're listening through all of it because you, 
you know, you're using different parts for different shows, and eventually you know all the sounds, all of all the music, and it's like, and you go on YouTube and you hear something, you're like, oh yeah, that's Dark Underbelly 1, oh look, that's Happy Jumpy Tune, or that's uh, Scheming Weasel, everybody knows Scheming Weasel, <laughs> and, and it kind of, uh, oh hey, Quizzical Haddock, hello. And, uh, yeah, Happy New Year to you, too. I'm very slow tonight for some reason. But I've been gathering up the effects to make this sound that I want. Now, let's see. What all do I want to bring over? I think I will bring... Uh, let's see. What was this one again? I like that. I don't need that one. Uh, uh, or these two. So, and uh, if I take all of these that go back into my attack file. See, I'm keeping that as my sample for similarness. I want it to be about that long, about that much. So to begin with, this is a good basic one if I want to use this. And let's see. Yeah, let's mute that for the moment. Bring, oh, how will I do this? This is where it gets, I, I hate having things all up and down the screen where you can't see them. So, and, <laughs> oh, you watched Twin Peaks Drinking Baileys. Is that a Twin Peaks drinking game? Every time they say, uh, really good cherry pie, or that's a great cup of joe, you gotta take a drink. <laughs> Every time Andy cries. Oh, let's see. Well, I mean, right off the bat, this is what it would sound like. <laughs> which is complete gibberish, but there is a lot of potential in this. Part of it, like I said, is just knowing what to pick and, and having a clear idea in your head of where you're going with it. Like this to me is very definitely at the end. So I'm gonna pull that out here. Then, that might be near the end. And this one. That could be the beginning, but because if I just put, okay, I've got to change it back now. I had it set to uh, simple for solo button, but if I'm going to play more than one, I have to have it set to multi-track. Simple means that anytime I hit the solo button, it mutes everything else. But that doesn't work if you actually want to listen to several things at once. Because if I just listen to these four right now, what I get is this. Which is a pretty cool start, actually. Oh, every time you see Bob. What if you don't know you're seeing Bob? Ah. Yeah, I didn't see Twin Peaks when it first ran. I saw it well after that. Now, one thing I need to do is I do need to take all the volumes down because even while you look at this and the volume is quite large, it's a combined volume. So these are all going to combine and make considerable amount of volume. So I'm going to take all of them down by five right off the bat just to lighten the load a little bit. And so, and now back up to the original that I'm working toward. I'm not trying to copy Chiyoko's, I'm just trying to create something similar to hers. Attack! 
So this gives me a good place to start. Now, like I said, I kind of want to use, uh, not that much. I kind of want to use drums as a basis for his power. Um, but I don't want to have them drag on too long. I'm trying to pull them down so they match roughly. And I'll fade that out. Actually, I'll probably fade it out from here. So then if I add these things all together, and if I fade it in at the beginning, and I take it down by five. Actually, let's not take it down by five. I kind of would like to have it be heard. Let's see. I'm going to split the stereo track. Now I split it to a left and right rather than to a straight uh, mono like I've done before, though it does it this way now, unlike the way it's done it in the past, which is probably for the best. You, you always have the adjustment. You don't have things that are 100% right or left. Um, I'm going to volume this up and see what happens. Okay. Now I can hear the drums a little bit. And I think what I want to do then is fade them in and out from side to side. So I'll fade this out to here and then back in. And so this will be in and out and then bring it back together for the ending. And from here to here, uh, to here, will be in. No, from here to here will be, actually, this would be out. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little tricky remembering what I was doing. <laughs> but if you even just listening to that alone, those, the drum track, it goes like this. I still have her attack on. That is silly. Okay. And that's kind of cool. So, and having it so far out to the side also makes it sound a little bit more distinct over other sounds like this. Yeah, I like that. And the drums are more like her dad is, you know, it's more of that martial, you know, uh, manly man sound rather than the bells, which are very Chioko. So I like that so far. Now, do I want to continue to add something else? I have to add his voice, but I could add, for instance, let's go back to, change this back to simple for a minute, and add this. I think I'm not going to. If I was going to add that, I would want to counterpoint it to the other drums, but I think it's going to be too busy if I do that. So I'm going to cut that out. What about this sound? I like the idea of that actually right at the end. 
No. Right out like this. And then actually cutting out the drums rather than fading them out at that point. Because then what we end up with. Oh, and then the last thing would be this sound. Nah, I don't want that. Okay, so now what I've got. <laughs> I'll put this back on multi-track. And. Okay, and then I just want to unmute all tracks and then mute these two back down. Now. <laughs> nice. I think I want a little more volume on this bit. just so that there's a little bit more variation. Nice. <laughs> okay. So it's a good start now. And it's about the right length. It comes in real close to hers. Now I want to have, I need to put his voice in there. And to that end, I'm going to mute all tracks and listen to hers to see where the voice comes in. Okay. But I echo it a lot, so I'm going to take his voice all the way down to the bottom to work on. And. Because what I've got here is... Attack! Okay. <laughs> so, let's see here. Pull this up. Okay. Attack! Okay. Let's see. Oh, no. It's, it's so... Um, I get so... It's so weird when you're going between many versions of a program and some of them light it up and some of them dark it out to make it highlight it. I'm going to bring this up some. Attack! Okay. And I'm going to make four copies of it. And... They're all going to get reverb. Actually, before I do that, because reverb will only stay within the edges of the of the sound clip you have, and I want to make sure that the reverb continues as long as it wants to, which means I need to add. Yeah, let's make this bigger. I need to add some more space for it. I'm trying not to copy anything that isn't, that has any sound. And yeah, let's do that. And if you copy off the edge, then it has problems with pasting. So you just have to do it that way. Attack! Okay, now I can look at doing the reverb. I just use the default, as I said, because see, it extends way out here, and it would have cut off where the the file, where the uh, track, this piece of track ended. Attack! Oh yeah, thank you. I'm glad you like it. You see, um, if you're switching to headphones, do you want me to play the uh, the original sound of Chioko's attack for you, so you can hear how that sounds, and then see where we're going with it? Just drop me a line. I, I do keep on that. I get I get real kind of stuck in what I'm working on right now, but I, I'll keep an eye on you, Haddock, there. Um, so I've got the reverb on these. Now, hers gets this, we get this mult, no, silly thing. They're all selected, so it wants to move them all. I'm going to move them on down. Now, I'm going to do different effects on each of them. Oh, okay. Let's go up here and do this first, then. Because, let's see, where I'm going to do, mute all tracks, 
Now here's uh, her sound alone it should be no I said mute oh if I mute all tracks it should take solo off silly machine okay here's how it goes Attack! and you can see how I use the a bell and chime motif for her and there's a long echo on it um, and then what I'm using for him by comparison is if I unmute all tracks and then mute her, you can hear, this is what I've got so far, and you can hear it in the headphones. Uh, attack, 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 attack. So I'm playing with more of a drum motif for him. And I don't like where I've got these all placed just yet, so I think I'm going to bring them all into a certain depth there. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, I like the placement on that. See what I mean? It's It's got the same depth, the same power, but it's definitively a different sound. Now, one of the things I really need to do is I need to put a lot more distance on these. So I'm going to give them some more blank space to work in. Because once you start putting in echoes and stuff, you have to have room for them to exist. I don't paste right on the end. I paste just inside the end because if I paste right on the end, then you get this bar and you have to remember to click to remove the bar which is just, it's just a little bit of annoyance. It's not important, but it's just a lot of times easier to paste a little bit inside. So one of the things I'm going to first do a, let's see, let's do a really high high pass filter on this and then bring the sound up. Uh, not that high. So that one, so here's the his normal Attack! one. Whoops. Attack! And then this one goes. Attack! It's, we've got a strange echo on that a little bit. And I think I'll do the same thing to this, but not to that one. This one is going to be... What? Um, and I'm going to do an echo on these. Oh, yeah, I could have a lot more space on that. Hold on. Echoes, I, I, like I said, I just use the default on a lot of things because it's easier than remembering or forgetting that I failed to change something at some point. This one, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch this down a little bit. Like, and then I'm going to echo it. It should be a really interesting effect. Oh, no, I, whatever that is. <laughs> I know it's EQ. I don't know how to use it. Okay, now, and we'll make this one and we'll make these a little off center so that it creates sort of an interesting effect. So even just listening to these four, what we're going to get is this. Attack! 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 And then with the music, The whole thing sounds like this. Of course, I won't carry it out past that. The drum beat is going to end it all. This, this drum beat right here should end it all. Yeah. And that will cut off the voice. 
not sure if I like this as much, but actually maybe what I'll do is do this. Undo that. Do it just for this one. Move this one. Cut off this one. Ah. Ooh, I know. <laughs> If something is just shifted a little bit, it creates its own reverb, which can be interesting, especially if I was to do something like pitch this one maybe down one. Okay, let's see what that does. I want this one both louder and longer. I'm going to put more reverb on it. And slow it down a little bit. Let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what happens is kind of how, how a lot of the best effects get made. Okay, let's see. I'm not liking these ones at all. I think I'm going to let... Actually, no. Let's do this. Rather than letting them go, I'm going to take them way down and leave them in the background. And actually pull them way out to the edges and see what happens. And actually, maybe even do... No... Offset them a little bit. Let's see what happens. I like that. Now there's a little bit of balancing still to do. I gotta make sure that the voice isn't overwhelmed by the sound, but also vice versa. So let's listen to this really carefully now that I kinda know where I want things. Take this up a little bit. I like it. What do you think? <laughs> if you're still here, Haddock, do you like that? Um, luckily, I don't have to reproduce all of his... I mean, make the same for, uh, of all four of her attack forms. I just have to do this one, and then I have to do his one form that she doesn't know, which is the Archivolt. It's important that we're setting that up in this season because, um, spoiler alert, one of the ultimate things of my five-season story arc is she has to close a gate at the end of the fifth season. It's important. It's an apocalypse event. And she has to be able to close a gate. And she never learned because her parents were killed before she learned the fifth form. And she can commune with her dead relatives if she's out of the body, but she can't stay out of the body long enough to learn the fifth form. And so it's, it's very frustrating to her and to them that, that this never, she never got trained on that. And so it's, it's going to be, it's, it's part of the, one of the various ongoing storylines is that she has to figure out a way to learn this form because she knows something's coming and that she's going to need this. Um, twice in season two does it come up. And the second time she's unable to actually close the gate she has to she she's on it he closes the gate in a flashback and then she's unable to close it in a current day situation and it's very frustrating so um that's another a power entirely that i have to create and it's going to probably be a much different longer sound among other things and i will do that one tomorrow i think Pardon me. 
But so this one then, I can take, let's see, all my bits and do, uh, let's see, where is it? It's merge to, no. Where is it? I know it's possible. No. Oh, come on. Tracks, mix, dir, mix and render to new track. That creates me a new track of just this without getting rid of all the other tracks. So now I've got his ability there, and I can bring hers down. And then we can just have those two. And we can mute all tracks. And then just come down here and listen to these two. And so hers. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, Captain had a, a quizzical haddock, <laughs> Captain Haddock, <laughs> blistering particles, <laughs> um, just pointed, he says, uh, it's great learning opportunity for me. My mind went to the way they must have created effects used when they used the voice in Dune. You know, it's very possible. There's, there's so many ways to maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> no it is wow <laughs> I, I read some of them in French the dog says something good Snowy says something completely different in French um, yes yes uh, but yeah so that, that's, that's a good comparable effect and now I'm pretty happy that I've got this here this will be dad's attack form Hiroki and, and this is Chioko's. So that gives me one of the major effects that I need for this episode. I'm also going to have to create monster effects, of course, at some point. I may just go through, I mean, tomorrow I'll do the Arcad Vault, and then I'll do a few more scenes, and then I'll do the monster. That way I'm breaking up just doing scene work. But yeah, there's, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously not the most technical person, as I say, but that's why I feel like I can explain things in a way that really, really beginners can pick up easier because I'm not technical. I'm not using all sorts of technical jargon. But at the same time, uh, you know, it means that I, I don't have the answers to some questions. And I also don't have access to as wide a range of possibility because I don't know what they mean. I've dipped, I've dicked around with a lot of things like echo and stuff and I make little changes and I, I can't remember what they were, you know, and, and that's why I usually just use the defaults and then fiddle with it once it's in hard copy sort of, you know, rather than trying to go, oh, well, is that blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, echo. And then I go, oh, echo, uh, slow it down make it deeper, make it louder, do a high pass filter, you know, I'll do the things I have some understanding, some grasp of, rather than try to change the default, because the other problem is, you know, if I change it at some point, sometimes defaults remain and sometimes they don't, and that's one of the things that ha I don't, that changes actually a lot from version to version of Audacity, and if you assume it's going to stay and then it doesn't, then you have to remember what it was that you changed it to. And I'm not big on note taking. So, but you know, and of these, you know, the things in here, the things I use the most are things like amplify. I use click removal sometimes, usually just in audio book creation. I'll use echo occasionally. I do fade in, fade out quite a lot. Noise reduction, of course. 
uh, repeat can be interesting, but reverb, well, repeat, it, it's supposed to be the repeat key, but anyway, reverb, reverse, you can do some real interesting things by turning things backwards for sound effects, particularly. Truncate silence is almost kind of a search and replace. You can, like, say anytime there's silence of more than X amount, cut it down to X amount, or at least... That's what it's been in prior versions. I haven't used it in a long time. Um, I've never had luck with Wawa. But, you know, the declicker, the de the high pass and low pass, a noise gate, pop mute, my favorite, room machine, another favorite. You know, I had, and then a lot of stuff that I just don't use. I, most of them I took out because you can add and remove them from the menu relatively easily. Um, because... In the past, I've always been frustrated when the menu is like scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down to get to the one thing I use and then scroll back up to get to amplify. <laughs> and so shortening it so it's all on one screen is lovely. Repair is for like if I, if you pop the game, you, it's, it's supposed to fix things. It's just so much easier to start with good sound. Uh, I've never had a lot of luck with repair. I've had a little bit, but it's also you have to do it for every tiny little fraction of sound. So if you pop the gain a lot, you're just going to be spending hours fixing it, from what I remember. Uh, so anyway, I think I'm going to call that a day. I'll play these one more time, just so we can have the fun of comparing now. <laughs> Yeah, you can't get lost in the jargon. I mean, it it really helps, I'm sure. I mean, I always think of like the... Have you ever seen... Haddock, have you ever seen the movie The Phantom of the Paradise? There's this beautiful scene in there where uh, the villain Swan is... <laughs> in, in The Phantom of the Paradise, there's a scene where the villain Swan... They've got like... And this is old school. This is like 76. Oh, it's a great movie. It's a great movie if you like like cheesy cult movies this is a it's a better better double feature with the rocky horror picture show than like anything else um but this came it came just before the rocky horror picture show too if i remember correctly it's like 75 and that was 76 but phantom of the paradise has paul williams the son the singer as a villain he's a he's an evil record producer and he's got it's like the phantom of the opera but with rock music sort of but there's a lot of other stuff too and there's one scene where he's in this awesome studio and there's like all the, the panels with all the dials and not dials, but like turning things. That's dials, isn't it? Well, anyway, all the little switches and stuff. And he's just sitting here going filters, click, 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 Dolby's click, 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 and plugging things in and unplugging them and, and altering the voice that's being sung. And, and every time, the hell was that? Oh well. Something just fell behind me. I don't know. Must have been the cat. But every time I think of, you know, professional sound people, I think of that sequence and I'm like, there are so many switches on that board. Does he really use all of them? Because <laughs> it's like this cockpit full of switches. It's just this huge, amazing sequence. It's really... I, it's a fun, fun movie, if you like silly, silly stuff. It is very silly. But let me play these one more time. Here's the one that I did years ago for a Chio. And all of her attack forms have the bell motif to them. That actually... Let me play you the other ones. Uh... Oh, of course, it's not going to be easy to get to. Just because, oh, I'm so clever. Um, she has also.
had each of those, but I kept the bell motif, even though they each have their own sound to them and they're different sort of levels of power attack. You know, just like in a video game. I don't have to create those ones for him because he doesn't use them in this. And this is, as far as I have planned, the only time he appears in the flashback. So here. <laughs> You say the screenshots look awesome. Is that for Phantom of the Paradise? It is a really fun movie. It's one of my favorites. I can watch that. And the music is super, super fun. Um, Paul Williams did the music. He's written a lot of songs that everyone has heard of, even if he didn't sing them. Because he was like super, he's a super uh, famous songwriter, even more than he's a singer. I mean, he wrote old-fashioned love song and rainbow connection and um a lot of stuff in the 70s and 80s and um and he was actually in uh baby driver recently as as a, as a villain there too and that was i was like oh my god it's swan <laughs> but uh <laughs> he, he's he's done some movie cameos throughout the ages but i loved him in the phantom of the paradise but he also did all the music which is why i hope I kind of hope they never remake it unless they use the original music because there's several, the, the whole premise is you've got this nerdly songwriter who is doing a rock cantata version of Faust and talking about how Faust sold his soul to the devil for earthly uh, wisdom and, and money or whatever. And, and this, evil record producer basically steals it out from under him and turns the songs into pop songs and so each there's at least three different songs that are really beautiful songs for the original thing i mean very 70s but very beautiful and then they get turned into these horrible horrible monstrosity versions of them one gets turned into a surfer song one gets turned into like uh kind of hard glam rock and one is very goth and there were just it's it's adorable if you listen to it you can hear them it's hard to hear the original songs except in the first one but the the soundtrack is just great and uh i mean the the uh it, it's 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 entertaining just for that but the whole movie is so much fun and one of the things i particularly like and if they ever did remake it, as long as they use the original music, they'd have to get somebody like Jack Black to play Paul Williams' role. Somebody who could pull off that, you know, I'm in charge of everything, even though I'm this creepy little guy. Because um, that's kind of, well, in fact, Swan very specifically has like all the, all the doors in his offices or his height, because he's a short musician. The musician is a short dude. They have all the doors his height, so everyone else has to duck under them. <laughs> and that's one of those things that is just there. You don't really notice it until you're, unless you're looking for it. Anyway, sorry, I kind of went off. I Now I want to watch Phantom of the Paradise, darn it. Anyway, um, so I'm done with that. That's, you know, and this is another reason why it takes a lot of time to do sound effects and things because you have to go listen to them and pick them out and listen and pick and mix them and discard the ones that don't fit and uh and but now that i've got this done i can use it for all of his attacks obviously because you have a you don't have to change it every time i will have to make a different version of it but it's going to be super simple which is this is what it sounds like if you're in the spirit realm with the character when the attack goes through. If you're not, then it sounds, it, you just get like the echo of it. I basically uh, low pass, no, high pass filter the crap out of it and take the sound way down. So you just hear it, even though you, even though people not in the spirit realm don't really hear it. We still get to hear it. Anyway, so I know that's a, little bit of uh that makes no sense but uh so i and these are all the sound effects i pulled to use for it but i at least i already had the idea that i wanted to use sort of a, a drum beat for it 
And because that's got a, like I said, a more martial, masculine feel. Oh, here, here, here's what the attack sounds, Chiyoko's attack sounds like if you're not in the spirit realm. Um, hello. Attack! You know, it's just very, very faint off in the distance. Because the, the scenes as we do the battles alternate between in the realm with them to hear it and then out of it you know with the other people around still hearing the attack in the background because we know the fight's still going on you got it okay good <laughs> so okay i'm gonna wrap this up i think i might go ahead and play some more of uh lobotomy corporation because i'm very obsessed well I'm, I'm, I'm almost burned out on it which is good i'm kind of working to burn myself out because at that point i could stop and actually get some work done again because my holiday quote unquote is basically almost over so thank you for joining me thank you to haddock quizzical haddock for being here if they had anybody else who happens to be around hey bunny you gotta stop doing that that catches my anyway um cat and uh, I will <laughs> hopefully see. What are you full of beans today, or what? She's full of beans. Anyway, bye bye. <laughs>